Hey boys and girls, it's time for the new trailer crawler. It's for the week of March 7th, 2010. And just like each and every other time and every other video on this channel, it's all about my thoughts. And this time, it's about the games coming out this week, and I will tell you each and every one of my bias worthless opinions a little bit of honesty here and there instead of reading like a press release each and every single time anyways first up is final fantasy 13 for the ps3 and 360 and i guess here's a word to the wise i hear the ps3 version is supposed to be the better of the two and seriously who wants to keep swapping between like 17 different discs or whatever the hell it's supposed to be i am so freaking glad this game is finally coming out people could have fully started and completed college in the time that this godforsaken game has first been announced to where we are now the visuals on this thing look great and word is is that the japanese version is apparently pretty fun there's an all new unique battle system to deal with where you need to strategize your attacks to essentially stun the enemy which actually just sends it into the air so your characters can start to beat the hell out of it it's also interesting how after each battle you automatically regain all of your health which apparently makes most regular fights feel like boss fights. And you know, when a high budget 3D JRPG comes out from Japan, I get interested because really all these like nifty low budget 2D, you know, high res art style games, they're pretty cool, but sometimes you do just want to play something that looks pretty good. But yeah, a lot of assholes I've seen have been pissy about how the game is way too linear. Like, yeah. Wow, shocking. You know what? That's par for the freaking course. Not every game is supposed to be like the first Dragon Quest or a roguelike where you spend hours upon hours wandering around in circles. Not that there's anything necessarily bad about that if that's what is your thing, but it's really not for everyone. But yeah, people play games for different reasons and sometimes people just want to experience a game story without getting lost every 20 minutes. This is a legitimate thing to do. This is not bad. This is not like terrible video gaming because people want to play video games like this. That's why these games sell so well. I'm not expecting this to be the greatest game ever here. This game has been hyped so much that will I end up being slightly disappointed? I'm really kind of curious to see how this game plays out because this is by the team that made 7, 8, and 10. I'm curious to see how their style has evolved over time. We'll see how this is. I am excited and I do have my PS3 copy pre-ordered. Second up is Mega Man 10 for the PlayStation 3's PlayStation Network. I talked about this last week when it dropped on Wii's WiiWare, and now here it is. I'm going to make this short, but I have been playing it quite a bit, and it is an awesome freaking game. This might be controversial, but I actually like it more than 9, at least so far. I haven't played it as uh, Proto Man or Base, or I believe those are the uh, two other selectable characters but yeah stay tuned for my review soon really good game third up is yakuza 3 for the playstation 3 no everybody is not called yakuza let's get our japanese pronunciation correctly here or at least attempt to come on it's 2010 it's 2010 guys what the hell is up yeah anyway sega what the hell is wrong with you what what mental brain decided that releasing this game on the same date as Final Fantasy 13 was a good idea. It is dumb as hell. I've heard many accounts of people saying, you know, I'd like to try this game out, but you know, I've been looking forward to Final Fantasy 13 for the past 13 years, and so I'm gonna go with FF13. And you know what? That's actually what I am kind of doing here as well. I am interested in checking out Yakuza, Yakuza, no, Yakuza 3, but I am not going to play this game, I'm not going to take a chance on this game on a, as a day one purchase over Final Fantasy 13. just not going to happen. But anyways, the game does look pretty damn cool, people have enjoyed the first two games, and so I do want to play this game eventually. It might not happen immediately, but yes, eventually. The game takes place in Tokyo's Red Light District and tells the story of Kazuma Kiru who's in the Japanese Mafia and he beats the hell out of people and you play through story missions and like I've said it just looks pretty damn interesting. It's good looking stuff. Fourth up is 
Sam and Max in Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space for the Nintendo Wii. Now, I guess this game has been coming out in uh, sort of episode installments on the PC, I think. I didn't actually research this particular uh, thing, but that's what happened with the last Sam and Max game. And, you know, it's really a shame that LucasArts let this franchise just die completely before selling it off. They made it completely irrelevant before selling it, and now Sam and Max is on this uphill battle the entire way. Really, the original game was just an extremely funny adventure game featuring these this, this buddy cop team of a lunatic rabbit and a dog. Telltale Games saved the franchise back in in 2006, bringing it slowly back into relevance, and apparently it was pretty good, though not quite as spectacular as the original, but that's really just from what I've heard. I haven't actually played that game yet. I would like to, but here we go again, and this game does look pretty damn cool, and if you're into adventure games, I doubt that you can go wrong with this one. Fifth up is Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition for the 360 and the PS3. Capcom double dips once again, and here is Resident Evil 5 with some multiplayer modes and extra missions, most of which were available as downloadable content for the original, but here you go, you can buy it all, one single disc, I guess it's one single disc. I could go into an entire rant here on Resident Evil tank controls are just no good regardless of how it ups the dramatic tension, and really I've thought about this quite a bit, and I know that that's the same exact controls that Resident Evil 4 had, not a big fan of that all in all, after all this time I don't think the controls just work that well. But like I said, I, that is a completely different rant. I'm not going to uh, go any further into that. Resident Evil 5, though, for what it was, a good game. I enjoyed it. It's solid. It's worth checking out. I don't know about buying. You might have to be a real Resident Evil fan to want to buy that game. But I'm not going to end up picking this one up just because I feel like I've had my fill of Resident Evil 5. But if you love it, why not have fun? Sixth up is Calling for the Nintendo Wii. Now, since a lot of people seem to have extreme hard-ons for anything that's survival horror, and people are willing to pretend like the most average games on this system are actually extremely good, which oftentimes they're not, I guess there is some hope for this one from some people. Will it actually be good? I kind of doubt it. I mean, it's Hudson Soft. Not to shit on this company, but when was the last time they actually did something worth buying that wasn't like a rehash of Bomberman, and I love Bomberman, don't get me wrong, but, uh, I, <laughs> who makes good survival horror games anymore? Resident Evil games aren't really even that much survival horror games, but yeah, this game looks kind of boring to me, but it could end up being good if you love this sort of thing, so I'm gonna leave this one up to you guys. No solid prediction for me, but I, I think it kind of looks crappy. Seventh up is Supreme Commander 2 for the 360. Here we go, mandatory just play this on the PC if you're into this sort of thing, since it's an RTS and, yeah, struggling with the controller, not that fun. If you love RTSs, what the hell would you want to buy this on the 364? I have no real idea. It doesn't look that taxing on a computer system, but... Anyways, the game looks neat. It has some average scores. It's got good scores, I should say. You could zoom in and out of the battlefield while the units vary wildly in size. It does look pretty cool. I'm not crapping on this game at all. Although, being an RTS, it doesn't look quite good enough to convince me to get over the learning curve to really enjoy this thing. But if you love RTSs, you should probably check it out. Eighth up is Blaze Blue Portable for the PSP. Like I kind of said with the last decent looking PSP games that aren't like RPGs, not sure why you would want to play them on the portable system when you have the 360 and PS3 version available, but I guess if you love this shit, go right ahead. Blaze Blue is quality gaming for sure, so you know what, you probably already know if you want to play this game. Ninth is Spectral Force Genesis for the Nintendo DS. It's a strategy, I guess, JRPG style game, but let's just call a spade a spade here. The developer Idea Factory produces shit games each and every time, and all the other Spectral Force games have sucked. Okay, I played uh, Spectral Force 
was it three or four on the 360 doesn't even fucking matter i played that game and you know there are there is a decent backbone of gameplay behind that thing but it's just so slow and tedious and boring that why the hell would you actually want to play that this game just does not look that exciting apparently it's been out in europe for like a year and nobody liked it over there so so that's it. You know, pretty exciting week here, actually. Final Fantasy XIII is a must for me, and everyone should be able to enjoy Mega Man 10 if you have any sort of taste. Yakuza and Sam and Max are pretty exciting as well that I'd like to check out. Just so much good stuff this week, I don't know how I'm going to get to it all. I give this week an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching now, and tell all of your friends. See you next time.